Hi, my name is Jacob Pluter and welcome to another um, segment of Abrasive Conversations Raw and Uncut. I want to thank everyone who have subscribed and supported um, the Raw and Uncut sections uh, the past couple of weeks. Um, one of the people who have been contributing and, and, and give me a lot, a lot of talking points is my friend Tendo. Um, so I appreciate you bro. So he today sent in a number of talking points and things that he said I might have missed with um, my previous segment which talks about the implications of Russia's uh, invasion. So um, there's literally three talking points that I want to go over and, and, and it's um, kind of from a South African point of view, you know, South African perspective. Um, in, in, in the three points that he puts uh, on the table, I think it's, it's three issues that South Africans in particular would be interested in. So, so the first one is with regards to the US um, invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan um, and comparing that to the Russia invasion of, of, of Ukraine. So that is actually a really good and important talking point because there is, there is a difference between the two invasions. So many people think of the, of, of, of the Iraq and Afghanistan invasion as um, a US invasion. Actually, it's not a US invasion only. It's US-led coalition invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq. So in both instances, in 2001, in 2003, the US uh, formed a coalition and then invaded those specific countries. And it was um, invaded after 9-11, um, 2001, when um, the U.S. was was um, was attacked by by Al Qaeda, so what that coalition then formed was a war on terror. So 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 the narrative that developed since 2001 and that, that led to the invasion of um, Afghanistan, but also later um, Iraq, was uh, to stop a war on terror, but also um, uh, a destruction of, of humanity um, in, 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 a specific, uh, in a specific way. So the Russia-led one um, the, uh, in, in, in the U Ukraine is a little bit different because it's not, there's no coalition formed around it. Um, and um, it seems that Russia is, is, is doing this alone and then that Putin really is behind the, the kind of the main architect behind the invasion. However, um, like many have noticed um, and pointed out to me, is that um, the narrative is, is, is different. So I, I agree, I agree that there is a different narrative um, and that both instances, the Ukraine uh, invasion uh, and the Iraq and Afghanistan invasions um, are treated differently by Western dominated media. So I, I, I agree com completely with it. So there is a difference in the narrative. And, and that brings me to the second talking point. And, and that talking point is with regards to um, how do we treat, especially from a South African and an African point of view, how do we treat this specific narrative? So the, so the one question that they tend to ask me is um, how do how we think about it? Uh, do we think of it in terms of, 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 of racism. So how do we make sense of it? Because I think many of us by now have seen how especially black people are treated. Um, they're trying to escape the conflict in, in Ukraine um, at various European borders. They, they are treated as non-humans. They, they're treated as, as, as people who are objects um, or not not even people, they are, they are treated as objects. For example, the one person was um, even asked and said, no, you need to stay here so that you can help fight Ukraine. So then it becomes this object that is expendable uh, in the type of, 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 of human existence that 
that he loves. So, is this racism um, that, that, that manifests or is this specific narrative uh, uh, racist? I would say, uh, this I would say, is that uh, the, the global political structures like um, NATO, uh, the UN, it is dominated by Western, Western powers. So that in interest is always to, to serve especially people living in the north. And the majority of those people, unfortunately, is, is white. So if, it's, if it's, it's serving the people in the north, then one can make an argument with, reg with regards to that, that these specific global political structures is serving the interests of, of white people specifically. But um, I'm tired of, of, of really speaking about, uh, about racism because it affects me really emotionally and psychologically. So I, I don't want to speak uh, about, about the racism uh, anymore uh, because I've been living it for so long and ha having to put my time and energy to just put it uh, out there and, and, and dealing with it is, is, is very, is to, for me specifically, it's draining. So I don't want to speak about it, but it's not something that I can escape. It's, it's a conversation that I need to have. So what is this? What is this narrative? Um, I would say that I would say the following that this forms part uh, of a civilizing kind of discourse where Europe um, and, and largely the West, including America, is always being regarded as the civilizing um, figure or the civilizing power. So if you, if, if you look at the war on terror then, then it's kind of lodged, uh, the thinking is lodged in that civilizing um, discourse, meaning that a war on terror is uh, really, go, uh, so terror, terrorism is um, kind of an uncivilized person that is, that is, that is um, doing stuff like, like terrorism. Um, so what then happens is that to, the West can use means to stop that type of uncivilized behavior. So I, it, it, it forms part of this, 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 this larger civilizing discourse and, 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 it, and it has a long history, it has a history that gave rise to, to the transatlantic slavery uh, and even colonialism or uh, yeah, colonialism in, in, in America and also um, the East and even in, in, in Africa. So it's part of that civilizing discourse. So then these European powers will always change the narrative in, in, in a specific way when they uh, invade or when they wage war, then it's always um, in, 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 a civilizing, in a civilizing way that they go about in doing this. And, and, and they want to bring change to, to, to bring about a better humanity. But what that type of narrative then does is it masks um, their terrorism. So uh, invading another country is, uh, I regard, is, 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 is a form of terrorism and then stay there and occupy it for so many years, killing the leaders and, and, and the people who's against the type of, of invasion, that is terrorism for me. So then returning to the second talking point with regards to is can we regard this is uh, um, racism is this racism this narrative i would say it's it's a lot in a in 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 a in a racial discourse that has not been undone um, and i think many people and many scholars are still working to kind of undo this civilizing discourse um, and it manifests in 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 many points the third one third talking point that he gave me is quite really interesting and he asked me um, uh, what would um, the response be if um, if Russia invades um, South Africa would the West even care um, and I, I 
uh, I really enjoyed it, the, that specific question because um, this brings me uh, to one fundamental thing is that Africa is already claimed. That's the fundamental thing is that Africa is claimed. So these superpowers will never fight um, amongst each other over Africa because Africa in, was already divided and that gave the form of colonialism. Um, independence from the independence so from the 1960s onwards to 1991 with the, with the um, collapse of the Soviet Union you can see um, the people and, and specific powers claiming and reclaiming parts of, of Africa. So uh, if South Africa is in, invaded um, I think the, the, the kind of Western or whichever superpower um, has the biggest stake in South Africa will really stand up and put up their hand and say you can't do this. So Africa is not, for me specifically, Africa is not in, independent. It, there is no independent states. Um, it's states that have uh, a colonial relationship with either the East or, or, or the West. So this notion that, <laughs> that, that this is, is independent Africa or Africa is independent um, it's a very flawed um, uh, concept uh, for me specifically. It's, it's, it masks the truth um, that Africa is already claimed. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that um, China has been the biggest investor uh, in Africa for the, for, the, for, for, for the past 10 years. And I think the U.S. realizes after, um, after the whole... Uh, the, 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 the whole issue now that they now that they're saying that, that that statement of Biden when he said he's back, I think is them realizing that they are behind. Um, they're behind Russia and China. So it so so this circles back to to that the, to that same um, uh, uh, um, points that I put on the table uh, uh, last week. Is that um, it's interesting to see how this game is going to play out. So. With regards to uh, would anyone uh, care whether South Africa is invaded or not or let's say uh, a rich African country like the DRC, uh, yes, they, they, they do care. Um, there's still prox uh, a proxy war going on in, uh, in, in, in Central Africa, especially around the Great Lake region because that's the biggest um, a region, especially the, the Eastern DRC, where um, Kesetri, Cobalt and, and, and Coltan is mined in the Eastern DRC, in the US and France, have, have, uh, and, and even some Eastern uh, companies have a large stake in it. And, and, and that conflict um, hasn't stopped. Uh, and there is um, millions of people that will left, um, who lost their life in that conflict, and nobody is, is speaking about it. So, yeah, uh, people will, uh, uh, Western powers will claim because uh, Africa is still largely the kind of colony that produces raw materials that exports it to these uh, superpowers where they um, can uh, kind of reproduce it into specific goods and services that they kind of resell back to Africa. So, um, Yes, they would care, but it's not in the interest of us. So, so that's the biggest difference. It's not to come and rescue or it's in the interest of, 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 of the black figure in, in South Africa. I, I think when, if South Africa is invaded by any, any of these powers, black people in South Africa will not be able to escape the borders uh, of, 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 the, of, of this particular country. So that's the reality. But... Um, the, the protective measures would be in such a way that it uh, protect the interests of those um, either in the West or the East. So that's just my, my, my take on it. So that is for it for this week, um, for, for this raw and uncut section. Uh, um, I hope it, it clarified some of the... Of, 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 of the concerns that, uh, that, that some of you had that, um, that I didn't speak about. Um, I didn't speak about it because I'm just tired of, of speaking about, uh, about racism. Uh, uh, but 
like Tendo have alluded is that there is a there is a larger responsibility from my part. So if you have a platform, even though you're tired, sometimes you have to you have to speak about it. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe and like and please also share your views and your comments um, if you have. I'm really open to it and and I'm, and, and I'm willing to discuss discuss it. Um, if you have talking points, drop in those talking points. I I truly appreciate it. Until next time, thank you very much. Bye bye.